Right, hi everyone. We're going to be finishing off our ship in a bottle picture today from How to Draw Inky Wonderlands, Johanna Basford. Now where I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the water um, and I'm just going to use this colour here. This is the light cobalt turquoise colour and I like it. I'm going to just start and I'm just going to, my hope is to just do quite an even colour covering of it all the way through. I've got to go in between all these pebbles though, which I'm going to attempt to do. Now, I've chosen this light blue colour. It's always quite hard to know what colour to do for water. There's lots to choose from in the polychromo set that I'm using. You can do them, sometimes water is nicer if it's sort of greeny, I find. But, um, and you can of course, I'm trying, going to try and do it all quite an even um, covering of the colour um, to try and keep a steady hand and an even amount but it's not always easy. Um, sometimes it can be nicer to do it darker in some areas than others and perhaps to add some white pen for sort of accents and things but uh, I'm just going to try and keep it even for this one and gentle. I don't know even if you can really see it that well. So I can't really zoom in. I can zoom in a little bit but then you won't see the whole width. I'm not going to zoom in because um, I'll probably end up colouring off camera um, with this bit. And I'll zoom in later when we start doing the details. Basically I'm just trying to be gentle and getting a pale layer on the page can be nice and relaxing. Now the key with um, keeping it neat I think is to learn how to do an even pressure which is something that comes with just practice and time. Not to apply it too dark so even if you want a dark colour start off with light layers and uh, think about the direction that you're colouring in as well because it might show up. So uh, try to do little circles or like I did with the sky, you may have watched that video, it was all in the same across horizontal direction because I feel like sky can look like that at times. So if you get a few stripes it doesn't matter. Now the pencils are quite key as well when you're doing a background. Um, if you use a hard pencil, um, that keep one a hard pencil will be one that keeps its point really well, so you don't have to sharpen it very often and it still stays very pointy, and um, that's quite hard to get colour out of, you have to press quite hard or use lots of layers, then it's not going to give you such a good effect for background. So try and use a softer pencil for a background, just gonna move a little bit. Um, so you think carefully about the direction um, and if you are worried um, and don't want to do it, don't do it. It's not always a need for one. Now these bubbles I'm going to leave white. Now if you go over them you can just use a bit of white gel pen to emphasise them. So you don't need to worry too much if you go over the paint, over the um, lines. I'm going to try not to have to use the gel pen on them. Now this is quite a light layer. I can't, I can't see it that well where I where I've coloured and where I haven't. But I didn't. I really didn't want to do a dark layer of colour. The very reason that it might look too liney, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Um, you can of course use blending fluids to make a more even um, or blending pencils. I haven't got any of those with me to show you. But um, in fact Johanna Basford fairly recently did one 
a video on blending which was really useful and interesting and um, Susan Wimpany Berry's recently done a video on blending as well so there's plenty of videos out there to learn about that and uh, blending solutions and things but I find the problem with all blending tools is that if you don't if you do a poor job of applying colour first um, then they, they can't rescue you there's there's a limit to how much difference they will make so you have to be aware of that that they're limited in that if you do a really if you accidentally do a really dark stripe in a in a light area you can't just blend that away you'd have to rub it it'd be better off rubbing it out it won't just mix up and but it depends on the pencils you're using some pencils are much better for blending the more um, I don't know oil or wax based I'm not sure the difference but the really soft ones are much better much easier to blend there that's it that's all I'm doing for that it's just a gentle layer we're going to take, um, I'm just going to take this one, which is the cobalt green, and I'm going to use it for all these little bits here, but I'm not going to, hmm, I've got to decide, am I going to do a layer of one colour, a layer of another, or a bit of a random mix? So I'm going to do darker here and lighter here. Now... I was thinking of doing several different colours for this but I think trying to do a random pattern would be quite hard with so many and doing it striped so a row of one colour and then a row of another I'm not sure how that will look so I think I might just stick to this one colour and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing I'm trying to make it darker at the top and lighter towards the bottom all the way through on all of them I'm just checking you can still see which you can it's still I'm still zoomed out but hopefully you can get the idea without me having to zoom in too closely it seems like it's getting dark outside I think it's getting a bit ready to rain again. They had forecast as snow but they've changed their mind. So uh, that's interesting. We just have to wait and see what happens really. The husband did all the shopping this morning which was good for him, all the food shopping. So uh, we won't need to go out tomorrow. So uh, that's okay. We'll be lucky. Feel for those people that do. There's so much excitement when it snows in our house, and it feels very relaxing watching the snow and looking outside at how clean everything looks. But of course, I do feel for people who have to go out in it. But I think people are getting used to going out less and relying on going out less, which it's quite handy when it snows. Yeah. Means that um, it it doesn't you don't feel like you ha you're um, being forced to stay in in the same way because you're used to it. And also you're more likely to have some supplies just in case. I think people have most people have stocked up a little bit just in case they. Um, have a problem so uh, that helps a little bit too see there are still people that have to go out but probably with less people about it's safer for those that do go out so we're just working our way across hopefully you can see this is a slightly darker colour than I used for the other water that's my idea now these shapes you could do them as bubbles but then they'd all be white 
which um, I didn't think would necessarily be that um, be be what I wanted really. I wanted to add some colour. As I say, you could do them different colours as well. In the same colour. Thinking it's uh, it's a while to go yet, but my mum's birthday and Mother's Day always fall very close to each other. And if I want to make her a card, colour her something or whatever, I'm going to have to um, get organised with that because I've got less time on my hands now. So. Uh, I used to work part time, but my work seems to, I seem to just have a constant supply of work, which I'm very grateful for. And although I could still work part time, I just decided that I want to work full time at the minute. While the children are at home working their little socks off, I think I should be doing the same thing. It means there's less time for colouring, but uh, it's. Uh, it's and the money we don't need the money luckily really but it what I'm doing is I'm paying off the mortgage with my extra earnings which is really nice once I've done that I don't know what we'll do with the extra but you know there's always pencils to buy isn't there I don't treat myself that often because I'm lucky enough to have lots of supplies already but uh, you never know. But also I'm aware that I've got limited space to store them and if they're not out on my desk I tend not to use them so much. So um, I've got my Ergo Soft up by the bed and I'm using those. I'm nearly completed the week, the um, daily planner. I think it's 2017 the daily planner that I'm doing and I've nearly completed that and uh, I keep the polychromos on my desk. I've also got a set of Ergosoft down here in the kitchen for videos. But as you can see, I'm using the polychromos today. I'll try and do a mix. I'm aware that some people like the polychromos, some people like the Ergosoft. And uh, the Ergosoft are obviously a budget pencil polychromo is more expensive but they're still cheaper than some I don't know if I'd call them quite mid-range they are higher priced but there are more expensive ones like the Caran d'Ache and the Doe and Life Fast but I think a lot of people do tutorials with um, Prismacolor and so people want something a bit different as I only have a few Prismacolor, I can't do, I'm not really very good at using them that well. So uh, it makes more sense to do them with the sets that I'm more familiar with. And the Derwent Lightfast I've only had for about six months. I'm not so familiar with those. I have been using them a bit more lately, playing with them. I find there there's a completely different technique to using them. I find with these polychromos and with the Ergosoft they're quite similar in that you lay, layer up the colour. But the Derwent one seems a little different. For some pictures I almost splodged and mixed the colour together on the page and it was really thick. It was almost like oil paint, which was quite a fun experience. But I had to layer down a lot of colour for that. Just sounded like it started raining then. I don't think it did. I think something just blew into the window. Right, there we go. It's not particularly even really, but I'm sort of feeling like I need to hurry a little bit. Now what I'd like to do is just do a little bit of extra detail with this colour which I'm just trying to identify because it's so little. It is number oh, 
153 which is cobalt turquoise and what I want to do with this is just go under under each of these bits to make it stand out a little bit more to make it look like they're sort of on top of each other I'm thinking these look like roof tiles if I do them like this but that's okay Now lots of white dots and things can look quite pretty on the water but uh, I'm not going to do any because I haven't done lots of layers of colour it's quite soft I don't think they'll show up see some people say I can't get white pens to show up and I find that does happen to me at times some, some pens just aren't very good to be quite honest with you but I have to put down a lot of layers of colour for the pen to show up so it's worth bearing that in mind so even if you're using a pale colour you can get the white pen to show up if you put down lots of it see I think with this with the bubbles here with the fish I could go over those in um, in white and cover over the black with white so that they looked they did they looked a bit different but I think because my background colour is so pale it would almost look like I just rubbed it out you wouldn't see the bubble at all it would just disappear into the background so I think having the black line around it in this instance works well so I'm just working back and forth, doing a little bit of shadowing under each of these shapes, just to give it a bit of texture and interest. And I'm also thinking about what I'm going to do for the um, top of the bottle, because that's going to be coming up next. Mm. I don't. It's tempting to do a nice gold colour, but. Um, don't want to introduce another colour into this and we were, we were avoiding doing the yellowy orangey colours because I didn't think they would go so uh, not going to do that uh, just trying to work out where we're at over this side this might seem a lot of effort you might not want to bother doing this I think it makes quite a big difference to the sort of final look but obviously every little bit that you add takes more time so you have to just you have to think about that you know whether you whether you think it's worth it or not it's a very personal decision And I find sometimes I'm just, I want to get on with the next picture. So I sort of rush to end one. And other times I'm enjoying a picture so much I don't ever want to stop. I'm fiddling and fiddling for ages. Depends if I've got one in mind to do next or not. Sometimes if I'm doing a half page picture there's a picture on the facing page I find myself thinking about what I'm going to do for that one and then I end up rushing the one to get on and do the other one right there we are all done my fingers are hurting Whew, it's a very little pencil so now we've got I'm actually going to move my camera back there we go we've got the top of the bottle to do I'm going to zoom in a little bit as well right we've got what I'm thinking is um, we want to use some of the colors that are in are in the main part so we've got blues pinks purples and a few greens 
but I'm also thinking some of these these dots I'm going to do grey. I'm going to start here actually. Um, I'm going to use the cold grey 4 which we've used before so I think that will add some consistency and I'm going to do all these and I'm going to do them darker at the bottom than at the top if I can just to try and make them look a little bit shiny I'm thinking that maybe we there'll be some silver on here I don't know if it's going to quite come off on these little balls but on this bit I think I'll try and make it look silvery so we feed it towards the middle and much darker here There we go. Now, maybe I'll do the same here as well. And here. You notice I'm not colouring that middle part at all, I'm leaving it white. Now, the main part of the bottle. Um, this bit. I think I want a similar effect but I'm going to go for a slightly different colour just so it looks a little bit different. I'm going to go for a slightly darker one. This is the cold grey 5. I'm not going to press too hard though to start with. I want to see what it looks like first. I'm going to go for a very similar effect and that it's faded out towards the middle. And I'll do the same here and then I'll add a bit more in a minute. So you notice my directional colouring isn't the direction of the bottle. It's the direction of the um, that I'm sort of fading the colour into. I find that's more effective. Out of the line. There we go. Now the I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna have an experiment. Try and do a sort of metallic-y, pinky, purple colour. I think this magenta is gonna be the best colour to try and attempt that with because it's quite a, it's not milky. I don't know the word whether it, I'm looking for translucent or opaque or something like that. I don't know the technical terms, but I think it will work because as I say, it isn't milky in color. I'm just gonna fade it out and make sure there's some white. Hmm. Not sure. But anyway, I like it. I don't mind it. That one's gonna be a different colour. And this one. So I'm leaving a little white gap to make it look shiny. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm just experimenting and I'm going to grab a purple. Um, oops, it's gone all a bit squiff. There we go. Um, this is the mauve actually. And so darker here. There are a lot more layers there and lighter towards the middle. And here we'll do similar to what we did with the pink. I can 
here's some um, sort of hedge cutters outside. We're near the railway line and I know they popped a note through saying they were going to be cutting some cutting um, overnight and weekends and things when, the, when it was quiet. Now, I feel that I messed that up. I feel that that pink and that purple should have been swapped over because it goes pink, purple, purple, pink and I'd rather it had gone purple, pink, purple, pink. But um, anyway, it is done now. So what I feel I need is just a little bit of darker on the bottom of these um, circles. So I'm going to go with the cold grey six and I'm just going to put a darker edge a darker base on each of these. Yeah, I think that's better. And I'm going to put a little bit of darker here. There we go, I am done. I'm going to zoom that out. Whoops, let's push that up for you. Keep going. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Hopefully you can see all of that now in shot. Sorry, it's a funny angle because of the way the camera is pointing. But uh, there we go. Um, that's all done. So I hope you enjoyed that um, series of videos. Um, on how to do the uh, the bottle. Um, I enjoyed doing it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it too. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.